Coming up next on Arizona Horizon, we'll take a slightly twisted review of the year's news as expressed through the pen of editorial cartoonist Steve Benson. The Cartoonist Show is next on Arizona Horizon. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Arizona Horizon. I'm Ted Simons. Each year we look back at headlines and news stories as seen through the eyes and the ink of the editorial cartoonist. Arizona Republic cartoonist Steve Benson joins us now for what promises to be a visually stimulating performance. It certainly won't be verbally. <laughs> how you been? Fine, how you Good been? Good to see you. It's, a, it's the end of another year. I tell you, it's, gone, it's been this orange pale blonde flyby of this weird candidate on the Republican side. You're talking about Donald Trump's hair, aren't you? Oh, I tell you, man, it's, it's, like, uh, it's like a hairball out of a cat that well, cannot be controlled. <laughs> we'll get to uh, all of that in a second. But first of all, <laughs> as far as the year is concerned, uh, what kind of year for cartoonists? For a cartoonist, if it's a bad year for us, is it pretty much a good year for you? Uh, that, that I think that's a good uh, rule of thumb, ab absolutely. You can tell we're coming close to an election year because readers are getting really snotty. Ah. And they're starting to catch the fire of the Am American democratic system where they just want to kill each other. And you're gonna, it's just going to get worse. Oh, it's going to get worse. I mean, we're, j we're not even you know, to the first turn in the, in the track. Before we get to the cartoons and more of this kind of stuff, though, mm -hmm. I want to ask you a few questions. Sure. The Internet. How has the internet changed what the editorial cartoonist does? Well, as papers started to go under, and they're still going under, uh, the uh, speculation and, and morbid curiosity and fear of cartoonists was that our profession would go under. But that's not happening. A lot of the displaced cartoonists are going to the net and setting up their own websites. And, and, um, and they can now uh, not only create their own websites, they can also market their stuff to all the newspapers that are now on the web and have a uh, have a internet presence. So basically, so, the job itself, you, we're not. Are, are we losing cartoonists? Or you're saying they're just going over to the? Are they making a? Are they making a living over there on the web? It's uh, harder over there. Uh, they have to run their own shop. You know, do their own computer rolodex, all that kind of stuff. And it is hard. They don't have a stable salary. They probably charge per use. They try to get these clients and then. Uh, charge them per use or a monthly fee. So that's a, that's a tough life. Uh, I'm one of the um, crustaceans left uh, that still has a full-time job so, with the newspaper. So where are the good new cartoonists coming from? Are they coming from the web? They're coming from the web. Uh, we're, we're getting an increase in the younger uh, set coming to our editorial cartoonist conventions every year, which is a good sign mm -hmm. because it shows, you know, there's undergrowth in the garden, little seedlings popping up. Thank you. And they're, they're coming. So I, I think that actually our profession is not in the uh, dire straits, which is the name of a rock band in the 1920s. Yes. Uh, you would remember that. It, it's not as bad as uh, we thought it might turn out to be. And yet, are these new cartoonists similar in their approach? to the craft? Do you see a little subtle differences? In well, what's amazing about the, uh, the new cartoonists is how uh, adept they are with computer technology mm. and all the uh, ways they can twist and morph and color and get special effects. I mean, they came down the birth canal, you know, uh, with, an, you know with, a, with a pad, you know, with an iPad. I mean, it's just amazing what they can do. And so it took us dinosaurs a while to get into the groove. But everybody has their own style. Everybody wields the stylus even differently and applies the color differently and it depends on the kind of tool set you've got on your computer as well. But it still takes a lot of creativity and everybody has their own distinctive style. In fact, I think that the computer uh, um, age has really morphed my style. It's changed my style a lot. In what way? Um, I used to do a lot of cross-hatching, a lot of real detailed, uh, you know, um, meticulous work. And now I just do a basic black and white scan it in, and then throw color on it uh, from the Photoshop goddess. And so that's how it works. And so that kind of gives my work a, a, a different look, a, a muted look. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at your work, uh, muted and otherwise. <laughs> we'll, we'll start with, uh, we'll start with a <laughs> My polluted look? Your, yes, uh, okay. we'll start with a, a cartoon that really, uh, this, is a, this is a moving cartoon. This, this is, I think, all, everything we're gonna look at tonight, this one may, got, I think that got me the most. 
Well, thanks. It did get a lot of, uh, it, it struck a visceral chord with a lot of people. And, um, and you know, it reminded me of how the French responded to us after 9-11. Lamont's headline was, we are all mm -hmm. Americans now. And then when this cartoon ran, I got uh, many, many uh, emails of thanks uh, from French citizens living in France, thanking America. And um, it got, uh, gee, 602,000 likes on the USA Today. And I was so surprised by that. But my editor, Phil Boaz, and I worked on this. He says, why don't you have Colossus striding over to France? And then it kind of went yeah, from there. Yeah. So it didn't get done until about 11.30 at night, but it was worth it. Uh, it's, a, it's a great piece of work. Now, Thank you. here's your poodle. Uh, this is suggesting that France is, is, uh, is uh, what, what is it suggesting? Well, it's uh, the, the French poodle and, the, and its, uh, its front uh, dagger-like teeth are in the shape of a W and then the AR, so it's, it spells war. Um, f the French are teaching us now uh, how not to eat French fries, but how to wage war. And they're taking no prisoners. They've got three months now where, you know, no holes barred, uh, no constitutional protections. We can kick your door in. We can hold you without trial. We can detain you uh, for indefinite periods of time. This is, uh, gosh, this is like the conservatives want America to be. And this is France. And this is France. And they got three months of free reign of this to see if they can bring it under control. And again, this is all uh, in great part uh, because of ISIS, ISIL, whatever you want to call it. Right. You know, there's this whole business of you can't uh, make a, a cartoon drawing of certain things. Uh, you're saying that the, the, the artist's pen is mightier than the sword? I'm saying that uh, actually we have lost, of course, some cartoonists to uh, to the death and destruction of extremists. I've had my own death threats and that kind of thing. I've been fortunate uh, that we've been able to track you down and shut you up when you call me. But um, nonetheless, you can kill a cartoonist, but you can't kill ideas. So um, they just pop up and flourish. And it, you, the extremists can play whack-a-mole with us all they want, but we'll keep on coming back. The so, Charlie Hebdo thing, though, how did you respond to that? Oh, uh, a great deal of, of uh, passion. A great deal of sadness and anger. Uh, you don't do this to. Do, you can tell how democratic a society is by how they treat their artists. And um, France responded to to the call and killing their satirical geniuses was a blow to the heart of the country. These were like their family. And then to see. Uh, Charlie Hebdo, you know, refuel and pick up and rehire mm -hmm. uh, or hire new ones. I mean, it, it was defiance at its best. And this is what we do in, in art. Art can be a dangerous business for those at the receiving end of the pen. Uh, yes, they can. I, I, I like this one here where uh, basically you did draw a Muhammad cartoon, didn't you? Uh, it's the way I thought I could really get at it directly and not be a wuss. Yeah. Uh, but, um, <laughs> you know, editors, um, particularly in the States, not so much overseas, have not allowed their cartoonists to draw uh, Mohammed. Um, and so the question is, if you want to draw him, why would you want to draw him? Um, well, some would want to draw him because they want to make a point about freedom. Others would like to do it just to upset people who think that they should you know, uh, keep these things off limits. But my editor made an argument to me. He says, first of all, I'm not going to let you do it because I'm your editor. Second of all, if you were to do it, it would not only uh, put you in danger, but it would put the rest of our entire crew in danger. Mm -hmm. You know, someone could blow up our building. And so quit being so selfish and narcissistic. And I said, no, wait a minute. You're, you're cutting to the very core of my personality. I was going to say, yeah. does he not know you? <laughs> uh, Kayla Mueller, this, uh, uh, how, do you, how do you do a cartoon on this story? Well, um, my first reaction was this first cartoon, which I was angry at ISIS and how that uh, they took this uh, young woman uh, hostage who had gone to Syria to help with the refugees and then, uh, you know, uh, executed her. And so I was really um, mad at that. I mean, just, just incensed by it, as were many people, such a um, talented, articulate, committed young woman to humanitarian mm -hmm. causes and had dedicated her life to that. And you, you mentioned that. That's referred to in your other cartoon here that we have of Kayla Mueller uh, in, in her eyes and, the, and her reflection. Right. And uh, she gave us all the inspiration when she had that, you know, when she said, I find God in the suffering eyes reflected in mine. And so I thought that is a perfect image. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just uh, used her her saying, her, her observation. The, uh, the concept of a uh, Confederate flag with the ISIS flag in, in even the same orbit upsets many. I'm imagining this one upset a few. Well, if you, if you go um, along the southeastern uh, you know, uh, border and then 
turn to the right, boom, you're in, you're in Southern Territory. And, and, you know, they have no tolerance for dissing the uh, stars and bars. But flags mean something. They are symbols. And just as uh, the ISIS flag is a symbol of oppression of women and slavery and mass murder and intolerance, the f Confederate flag is not about states' rights. The Confederate flag is about we have the God-given power and, and commandment to enslave black people. So um, on, that, on that level, they're both odious. Uh, Jihadi Don, I, I can imagine that you got a pretty big response. Can you really compare Donald Trump to anyone cutting off a hostage's head? Donald Trump has shown... By the way, is that Donald Trump? You thought it was Nick Nolte. I, I, well, I, I didn't know. I thought it was an old country western singer. I didn't know who that was. George... Um, George Jones, maybe? George Jones, okay. maybe, yeah. Um, yeah, well, he had the, wanted to get that arrogant look, and in the process, he morphed into a country western singer. I, I mean, that's a, that's a crime against humanity. So don't talk to me about you know beheadings. Okay. But right. no, uh, Donald Trump has shown an intense um, intolerance for Mexicans, comparing the rapists, murderers, and drug cartel operators. Uh, he ha he he gets in front of, of of a Jewish audience and starts cracking anti-Semitic jokes. All of his jokes are about Jews and money, and you know, there's a bunch of nervous laughter, if any laughter at all. And and he has this kind of visceral. Uh, smoldering hatred that I don't like and uh, I, I think he's quite intolerant and if he becomes the nominee he's going to be steamrolled by your local pet store owner I mean <laughs> you know he, he'll be crushed. All right I, I, I'm, I'm sure some folks have to uh, the concept of Donald Trump uh, calling uh, John McCain something less than a hero. Uh, yeah because got he got captured. Yeah. A hero to me is someone is not captured yeah. Okay, well, you're not going to capture my vote, and I'll be your hero then, because I ain't voting for you. But, yeah, that was a weird definition of hero. Indeed. And so we wrap up uh, Trump, uh, our segment on Donald Trump, with basically you being so, th as we mentioned earlier, what's not necessarily good for the rest of us, great yeah. for you. Well, hey, man, you know, if you want to do Trump in, in five easy steps, put down orange, put down yellow, put down pink, put down red, and then kind of blend it out, 50% white out, and you've got the pale tomato Donald Trump. We move on to the Clintons, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, this this is uh, this uh, yeah. I well, you know, I, I want to give her the d benefit of the doubt because uh, I think that she was a decent Secretary of State. But thirty thousand emails disappeared; mm -hmm. they can't be recovered. Well, a state is able to get some of them back, but she unilaterally decided which ones were private and which ones weren't. So we all have to trust her. Trust me, I'm from the government. I'm here to help you. Uh, we also have the American Gothic. That looks like that's uh, Bill's rear end there. Yeah, and some people said, who is that? That looked like Hillary Clinton, uh, you know, after a bad night with Bill. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, get this dead weight out of the way so I can actually have a clear shot at the presidency. The dynastic duo cartoon, uh, I think at one point probably was, was uh, pretty strong and relevant. Right now it looks kind of like, uh, who's, the, who's Bushman? Yeah, Bushman is at like 2%, yeah. and that's not his IQ, that's his actual polling data. Uh, Hillary Rodman, I like that it was Bush, you know, Batman and Robin Rodman mm -hmm. B. Are, I thought it worked so good, and I was hoping it would play out, but uh, no, Bush is not. It's not looking that way, it's no. Not looking that way. The next cartoon's a little wordy, a little uh -huh. wordy here. I mean, do you have to watch it without to, not putting too much... Uh, yeah, do you want to move on then? Is that what you're no, saying? No, no, okay. it takes me a while to read it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, here you got... You got Carson, he's running for the President of the United States. Muslims should not be allowed to become President of the United States. He needs to read Article 6, Paragraph 3, no religious tests or oaths of office will be required of anyone seeking uh, to fill a federal, a federal office. You can't do that. Religious oaths, I get people call me all the time, yeah, you can't be president, he's a Muslim. And I say, well, you can't be president, you're a moron. <laughs> uh, are this next one, gee, I wonder if that got a response. Uh, I got a, a few letters on, on that one, yeah. This is, you know, trying to, uh, look, and I'm not religious, but if Jesus were around, he would be, you know, he would be embarrassed by what Cruz and, and based upon my understanding of the Bible, the strangers among you, i.e. the migrants, bring them in, bring them into your home. Now, when I was drawing this, I got into a real sensitive area because if you're going to show us hands, you know, do you put nail prints in it or not? So I went out to my editor. I said, should I put holes in his feet and holes in his hands? And he said, no. And I said, well, okay, well, that's, that's gonna, that saves me a lot of holy hell. Okay, so, uh, all right. 
We'll move on. <laughs> uh, we've got the, uh, the uh, Patriotic Dreamers in the tank. And again, this one is basically no driver's license for you. Uh, you can go and fight for us and drive big heavy armored equipment and kill people and die yourself. But when you get back home, you can't drive to the local grocery store. I mean, come on, we're depending on these great kids who were brought here through no fault of their own, the dreamers, and we don't want to let them uh, have driver's license. Now I'm guessing this next cartoon, I'm guessing that's Governor Ducey, although that looks a little bit like a role player on Green Acres. <laughs> <laughs> it was my first, uh, that was a genuine snort, It sure way. was. <laughs> um, it was my first uh, stab at, at cold-hearted Ducey. I mean, this is the guy, you know, who, uh, who's cutting education spending and, and uh, whatnot while he's building, what, his eighth or seventh private prison uh, that's being fun, uh, you know, uh, uh, these, these prison builders and owners have happened to be f financing his campaign. The, uh, the next cartoon shows, I think that's Governor Ducey, very different than the previous look, but it's still, I think that's Governor Ducey. We were going over this in the green room, and who did you say it looked like? Uh, I don't know who that is. Jay Leno. No, the next one looks like Jay Leno. This one looks like, uh, I don't know, that, is that Chris Christie? Well, when, did she, when did Governor Ducey have such a big rear end? Well, uh, uh, well, when I started drawing him, he had a big rear end. I mean, he just kind of, the, he's like this little Pillsbury Doughboy that's not quite fat enough yet to be on the commercials, right. but trying to get there. Uh, the next one, uh, come on, that's Jay Leno. What's Jay Leno Jay doing? Jay Leno, and uh, yeah, well, he's running the state of Arizona. That's what he's doing. But of course, the state that trusts land, okay, uh, that's fluctuating in value. The, the first few years, they want to have the payout for, for funding school education at what? Uh, they want to go up to 10% for five years. They originally, they did. It was 6.5% is what we're going to vote on. And we're going to 6.5. Then they wanted to take it back up and then down again. I mean, this is the stabilized way of funding our education system so that teachers have a reliable income and we can get good education. Are you complaining? Wah, wah, Are you wah, complaining wah, wah. about it? This looks like, mm -hmm. this looks like uh, everyone's happy. Look at all the happy faces. Well, I was in a, uh, a drug-induced uh, hangover that came from my days at uh, the Student Union Building at BYU. If that isn't a whopper, I was going to say, I, I don't, don't have time to go into that one. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on okay. here. Uh, John McCain, always a pleasure to draw, I would imagine. Just yeah. The, Senator uh, McCain is always there. Yeah, and he yelled at those people from Pink who were interrupting his uh, Foreign Relations Committee, and he said, get out of here, you low-life scum. Do you have to make him so short? I mean, look at that next <laughs> to the desk. Do you have to make him like that? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and uh, well, Obama looks kind of hunched over there, too. Speaking of uh, the president, here he is uh, uh, taking on a heckler. Oh, the human tribe, the human tribe. He's from Kenya. You know, he's a black president. He's half black. You know, he's a communist. He's a Marxist. He's a community organizer. And now he wants us as one tribe to be a one world government. I get so sick and tired of these cut and paste, you know, group emails, you know, from the eight bazillion conservatives in Arizona who uh, send them to me. <laughs> Uh, next, we have an elephant uh, shooting itself in the boot. How is the GOP going to, you know, buff up the border wall? Maybe Trump will get Mexico to pay for it and cut Homeland Security funding at the same time. I mean, these guys are good anti-immigrants, but they're also an uh, anti-math. I mean, how do you do that? You're going to have to fund Homeland Security if you're going to stop the brown people from coming over. Uh, and you're not even talking about the fact that uh, there's, there's much debate now regarding how terrorists can actually uh, qualify to buy a gun in America. Isn't that bizarre? I mean, you only had run one Republican a few days ago who voted with the Democrats, 45 Democrats and, the, and, and a Republican, to say that if you're on their terrorist watch list, you can't buy a gun. And the Republicans thought that that violated the right of these uh, terrorists to uh, keep and bear arms. <laughs> The uh, President of the United States looking small here. I know your cartoon is tricks. When they're small, you're not mm -hmm. happy with what they're doing. Yeah. And uh, when they say, oops, that's usually not a good thing either. Well, he's trying to master the remote control on these drones. And you know, does he think that we can kind of pinprick our way to success over ISIS? I don't know, but first he's got to learn how to work the machinery. What are you, what are you all of a sudden, uh, General Benson here? <laughs> what, what? Well, uh, that's another snort laugh. That's two <laughs> snort laughs now. You've thrown it. I tell you. I, well, I was in ROTC, so, uh, you know, you, okay, you're well, messing with all the right, professional All right, thank you for your here. service. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> unholy mix. You got the Pope. What's going on with, with this? With an inflatable miter. Um, 
look, I'm all for the Pope coming over. I think the Pope's a cool guy. I call him Pope Frank because I, I feel this kind of this coolness about him. But look, you don't invite the leader of a major religion to speak to our secular com, uh, uh, Congress and pitch his religion. I think it's all good to get up there and talk humanitarian ideals, but inviting religious leaders, I don't care who they are, Joe Arpaio or the Pope. Uh, they should not be addressing Congress. Well, you also are on the other side of the issue here, at least as far as supporting the Pope. This time, you're kind of uh, understanding his pain. Yeah, and I think the, uh, the Pope is spot on on, on, on global warming. And, and I got people complaining to me about this cartoon. I say, call the Pope. Call the Vicar of Christ. He's the one that's in favor of, of, of uh, controlling the uh, climate through uh, you know, uh, cutting back. See, his number is 666-666-666. Okay, climate change. We've got the ostrich and the head in the sand. I, even I got that one. I mean, uh, there's 31,000 scientists supposedly around the world who are uh, don't think that climate change is a real uh, a threat. There are are several hundreds of thousands of scientists, UN and otherwise, who know differently. The next one, what is this? About? I don't see humor. I don't see irony. I don't see uh, creativity. I oh, see. Oh, thanks a lot. Well, no, I just. But I'm asking why you did this because I see what it looks like. You know, uh, a black dude. Mm -hmm. um, raising his fist. What, what, where, where is the, the different approach, the twisted approach? What's the, happening here? You know, Black Lives Matter was in the wake of Ferguson, in the wake of Baltimore. Uh, African Americans crying out for a voice. They've been part of this country for going on, what, 400 plus years, of involuntarily brought here to, the, to begin with. They've been a fabric of this country. They want a voice. So I thought, okay, let's let them own that voice. Let's make an African American Uncle Sam. That's Uncle Sam, then. Well, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, that helps a lot. It's their version of okay. uh, Uncle Sam. All right. I got okay. you. But, and, and you're also on the other side of this issue as well? This because is not a fullback at BYU, that's for sure. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, this, but police lives are on the other side of that issue as well. Yes. I mean, I, I'm a former police officer. I understand that police lives matter and that we need to uh, uh, be careful. And, and we do appreciate. I remember one time I was on um, patrol and uh, a civilian stopped as we were talking and he just came over to all of us or four or five of us and he just saluted us i always remember that he says, I just want to thank you for your service okay. so you know, all right. uh, uh we got the lowering of the confederate flag and we got the burning of the churches the burning of the churches uh oh, that's a story that a lot of folks have forgotten but that yeah, was a serious we had a whole, issue uh, we had a whole uh, raft of those church burnings upwards of 30 arsons or so throughout the south uh, after the uh, killings in uh, charleston and whatnot Five more reasons to ban assault rifles. I'm sure that got a response. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, if this keeps on going, we're not going to have anybody raise the flag. Uh, the next one made me laugh, not so much because of the bulletproof vest you can get at the concession stand, but I love the kid's face. I just, I just laughed. I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, you can go to the guy, think of all the cool things you can get, popcorn, candy, bulletproof vest. I mean, it's a new movie experience. Uh, okay. Uh, a crying bald eagle. Yeah, Gosh, I got We a, haven't uh, seen that before. No, no. Some guy wrote me, he says, oh, that's not very creative. You got a tear from the... I said, you're not seeing this in color. It's, it's a blood tear. Uh -huh. You know, you need to subscribe to the newspaper. Uh, Joe Joe Arpaio, uh, you know, uh, he, has been, he has been money for you. And he's been money for me. He's about uh, to uh, be paid. Well, he's paid a lot of money himself for He's admitted to uh, contempt. Now, the question is, is it criminal contempt for not obeying the uh, judge's order to stop the racial profiling traffic stops? And, uh, and he could go to jail. He could. He could. Theoretically. Uh, but right now, Judge Snow has, seems to have the gavel. Mm -hmm. and, uh, judge and Snow has been a good judge on this. Very patient, uh, uh, but firm. Yeah, uh, the next one, what, what's, what's, what's going on here? Well, this was, uh, okay, Bruce Jenner, who's now Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, and I thought this uh, was a striking pose that uh, she took. And it was kind of fun to, to draw Jenner in a way that consumers not, were not accustomed to on their <laughs> breakfast cereal <laughs> box. Yeah, you sound like a little tongue-tied there. Yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like it got you a little excited. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, uh, and then we have the sign of the cross, uh, Kim Davis, sign of the cross. Yeah, right now, look, she, she promised that she would serve uh, you know, dutifully as a clerk, but then when she's asked to do stuff that violates her religion, she invokes her religion. Well, if you can't serve because of religious proscriptions, then don't serve. Our last one, again, this one made me laugh out loud. I mean, I had to laugh at this one because Brian Williams, uh, he, what, what, what is he, what was he thinking? Uh, he was thinking, what new story can I come up with? 
I mean, here's a guy that says he went in with the first wave of helicopters <laughs> as we went into the Iraq war. And then, you know, things got bigger and bigger and bigger. And of course, now he's gone back further. And I remember uh, Bunker Hill. Yeah. Uh, good year for you. Nice cartoons. Always a the, pleasure the to have you here. The muted cartoons. Yeah, it's great <laughs> having you here. Uh, we hope to have you here again next year. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, thanks for you stopping by. Otherwise, I wouldn't be yeah, here. Yeah, I got nowhere else to oh, go. Oh, and now. God bless you, everyone. Except the politicians. Okay. okay. Uh, that is it for now. I'm Ted Simons. Thank you so much for joining us. You have a great evening. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you.